Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are talking once more about that tropical disturbance in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and pinned comment down below. That's also where you can find our very exciting Discord server and Facebook group in the same locations. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that this disturbance will end up being a fish storm? And what I mean by that is, do you think it will go out to sea or do you think it could eventually pose a threat for the United States? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get into this video and we're taking a look at our two day graphical tropical weather outlook here from the National Hurricane Center. And as you can see, we have a 90 percent chance of development now. So they are almost certain this one is going to develop. Uh, further and it does have a good 48 hours or so I think of favorable conditions before it heads into those shear uh, So even if this one becomes a tropical storm, it's not guaranteed it'll make it through it uh, But it would be interesting to see if this one could become one of our Named storms and get us further down the list Obviously we are potentially looking to break that record So it would help towards breaking that record if it briefly became a named storm just to get us through one more name all right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, which is going to tell us more about the track this one could potentially take. So here's that five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and as you can see, we also have a 90% chance because obviously it doesn't get higher than 90% chance here on our National Hurricane Center graphical outlooks. So you can see that it is generally heading west, northwestward. I would say mostly westward there. Uh, and it's looking to eventually go north of Puerto Rico now. That's kind of just what we're taking a look at. A south of Haiti, south of Puerto Rico track seems very unlikely at this point. Although it is still possible. These models do get it wrong obviously this far out all the time, especially when the development is this um, early on. So here's our shear map. We showed this yesterday, but this is the updated map, obviously. And you can see our storm there. It's a white dot on the very right-hand side, the bottom right-hand corner, actually, of our map here. And as you can see, it actually is in those green areas, and it's going to stay in those green areas for 24 or 48 hours or so. And that's the favorable wind conditions. So this storm isn't going to really get eaten up by shear. Uh, but it is heading towards those red regions, and that's where it could run into some very major problems, obviously. Uh, so it does have a good window of time to develop further, so it's going to need to do it while it's in this green area. I hope that makes sense. Also, on the same topic, here's our dry air map, and as you can see, it will interact with some drier air earlier on, actually, and that's kind of what could prohibit it from developing even in the short range. So we're going to need to watch that closely. It does have a 90% chance of development here. Uh, so we'll have to see if it can overcome the dry air. Shear is a lot more dangerous to a storm than dry air. Dry air can eat it up, but shear almost certainly does. You see it take the top off of storms all the time. Uh, this one's going to be interacting with both at some point in its lifetime. So if it does overcome that, that's going to be uh, a very bad sign that this storm has a lot of strength and a lot of fight in it. Uh, which would pose a threat, obviously, for anyone in its path. What we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the satellite imagery for this one. Uh, we're going to take a look at the sea surface temperatures. And then we're going to start getting into the spaghetti models, the intensity guidance, uh, and then our direct weather forecast at the very end. All right, now here we are taking a look at our satellite imagery. And as you can see, it's basically just a few thunderstorms. It's not really that uh, good of a looking storm yet. It's going to need to get its act together very shortly if it wants to become a tropical depression or a tropical storm. Obviously, the National Hurricane Center thinks it does. I do as well. I think that it does have some, you know, it does have some favorable conditions as far as wind. It does have the dry air it's contending with, but it, I think it has enough of a, a size to it where it's going to be able to keep that dry air out enough to develop a bit further, and I think that's why they're giving it a 90% chance of development. Also, these sea surface temperatures, well above average throughout most of the Atlantic. And a lot of people were saying, you know, warm sea surface temperatures aren't enough to help a storm develop. I beg to differ, especially this year when it's this far above average, and I'll tell you why. Because we've been in a sinking air motion, which is bad for tropical development. We've had a lot of shear and a lot of dry air for all of our previous storms, and they've still developed into tropical storms, hurricanes. We've seen an above average amount of tropical storms despite the dry air, the high shear, and the sinking air motion, that only leaves one thing. 
that leaves the warm sea surface temperatures. That is the only reason we've seen as many storms as we have, and that's the only reason we've seen two hurricanes to this point, because the shear, the dry air, and the sinking air motion certainly was not helping these storms develop. It was only the sea surface temperatures. All right, now what we're gonna do is move on and take a look at our spaghetti model guidance. All right, now here we are taking a look at that spaghetti model guidance, and as you can see, they have it going north of Puerto Rico, and actually a lot of them having cur have it curving northward towards Bermuda. So as of today, these models are well on board with the out to sea or fish storm is the nickname we have for it, solution. And that's very interesting. Obviously, it could flip back to where they kind of have it heading more further west, but I really think that this fish storm solution seems to be the more popular one. Let's go ahead and move on and take a look at our GEFS, which is our GFS ensemble model. And they have it heading towards Bermuda and then intensifying at that point. You saw before we have well above normal sea surface temperatures to the north up there. So this storm would have an easy time developing off the waters of Bermuda. Even though it's further north, uh, it's going to move away from the shear if it does that. And it could develop even further than the models think. It could develop into a hurricane out there. Uh, it would be very interesting to see if something like that occurred. Obviously, very bad news for Bermuda there. So we will continue to track this one. Here's our GEPS, which is our Canadian Ensemble model, and this one's just all over the place, though it does have, if it heads further north, this storm developing further, just like the GEFS model did. Also, pretty much every single member here has a fish storm solution, just like all of our other models, so that seems to be the very popular model opinion. Let's go ahead and take a look at that intensity guidance, and this is from yesterday, the one I showed in yesterday's video. You can see only a few models had this one becoming a tropical storm. The majority had it not developing whatsoever. Now, as of this morning, it's a completely different story. A majority of these models have this one becoming a tropical storm. There is a couple that have it not developing into a tropical storm, but a very strong tropical depression. It seems like the popular opinion now is that this one will become a tropical storm and then drop off after about... Uh, four days or so. So what we're going to need to do is just watch how these models progress. They could show this one being a little bit weaker or they could continue to show it strengthening. It's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at our La Nina, update you guys on that. We're going to take a look at our tropical weather outlook here from Direct Weather, and then we're going to get into the comment of the day and our patron highlight of the day. All right, so here's that Nino 3.4 index. And again, this is where we measure our El Nino or La Nina or what we call the Enso region. As you can see, since even yesterday, it has dropped even further. It was at 0.4 something as of yesterday. In yesterday's video, somebody could comment down below and help us out uh, the exact numbers there. But now it is at 0.502. So it is continuing to drop at a pretty steady pace. This one is going to be very interesting to track. Again, the further into a La Nina it develops, the easier we're going to have these, these Atlantic hurricanes developing because La Nina is typically lower the amount of shear we see in the Atlantic. So we've been in a neutral Enso for a while. The further this La Nina develops, the worse it's going to get for the hurricane season. That's why we think this hurricane season could be historic or probably will be at this point. All right. Now, for our direct weather graphical weather outlook here for our tropical disturbance the next five days, as you can see, we have this one heading generally westward or northwestward. You can see that it, we do have a very, very slim probability that this one heads towards Puerto Rico or maybe even a little bit south of Puerto Rico. I like to keep that option open because I know how quickly these models can change their mind and shift back south. But we do have a very high probability of this one curving northward very early on in the, the development towards Bermuda or possibly even east of Bermuda, which is very far out to sea. Uh, but obviously anything in between is possible. It is still possible this one could head towards the Bahamas or even the east coast. Uh, but really, I think there's going to be a high pressure system in place that is going to prevent that. Though it's really, really a bad idea to, to act like any option isn't possible. Even a golf option is available. Because this storm has hardly developed, the models don't have a good handle on it. Compared to if it was a tropical storm now, and we were able to sample the storm, these models would have a much better idea of what's upcoming. So this is still going to be a work in progress, and we're going to need to continue to track this one in the coming days to really get a good idea for what to expect from our tropical cyclone here that could potentially become our next tropical storm. All right, now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how far do you think 95L, which is the invest we've been talking about throughout this video, how far do you think it will develop? 
And do it for JL said, I believe 95L will become a short-lived tropical storm. A lot of things are uncertain right now about the environment around it. And I definitely agree. I think a short-lived tropical storm is a very safe bet. And it looks like 10 of you, including me, it's 11, thought that that was pretty good because you got a lot of likes on that comment. Great comment. I think that's a good analysis. And I quite agree. Anyway, for our patron highlights of the day, we've added a few names here. Uh, but we've also added another Diamond patron here. So we have Mark J, and now we have Mad Birds as well. So shout out to you. Thank you for becoming a Diamond patron. Thank you to all of you for supporting the channel. You guys make it possible. If you'd like to become a patron and support the channel, you can do so by checking it out in the description or the pinned comment down below. We just made a hurricane season update on there, so you can check it out if you become a patron today. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.